Is this real man Rice Cup uploading two videos in two days? That's like back to back unheard of. Oh my god, dreams come true. And because of the Inferno update, this update is amazing. I've been kind of hyping it up, right? Ever since last week, saying it's gonna be like the most crazy PVM challenge. I've spent a good seven to eight hours practicing and attempting the Inferno, and wow, it really is challenging. So on the last episode, I asked you guys if you wanted me to upload a full attempt of me doing the Inferno on my YouTube channel, and a lot of you guys really like the idea. However, I'm not gonna do that because if I did, it would be a two hour long video, and yeah, nobody's really gonna wanna watch a two hour video. So instead, I'll give you guys this video, which is like a summarization of my best attempt so far, at least on the first day of the Inferno. I will obviously be explaining the really important parts chronologically, you know, from wave to wave and a lot of the things that I've learned, like such as like what the monster's behaviors, mechanics are and uh, what my strategy going to the Inferno was like and obviously what my mistakes were that kind of, you know, made my Inferno trip short of reaching the final boss and all that stuff, so I'll give you guys all the best insights. So at the very least, you can understand why like this Inferno update was just so amazing, even if you never actually did it. So you can see it from my eyes, I guess, from my perspective. So the Inferno is similar to the Fight Caves in terms of like the structure of it and how it works. It's a wave spawning system where there's 69 waves, so each wave would get progressively harder. So obviously the first wave would be a little easier than the second wave. Generally speaking, and then eventually once you reach 69th wave, if you manage to, that will be where you fed the final boss. So in terms of equipment, everybody pretty much agreed that you would bring like full on mage and full on range. No melee. The only melee you would ever do in the Inferno was basically with your SGS spec. That was it. Just for healing purposes and prayer restoration purposes because yeah, you're going to need a lot of that. Now. For mage, it was more for tactical purposes. So mage was specifically for healing and like freezing. If you got damage, you really try your best not to drink like bruise. You you would try your best to use Barbarash to heal. And the second thing that you would use magic for in the Inferno was to freeze targets. It has so many applications, the freezing and the Inferno. And I'll talk more about it as I relate it to the, the monsters and how to deal with them. And range was basically your primary DPS. If you didn't need it to freeze things or heal off of things, you would just kill them with range as fast as you could, like for every single mob, basically. So the first monsters you'll ever encounter in the Inferno are a pretty unique monster that even the fight caves didn't have. They're like, I call them nibblers. And as the name suggests, they nibble on stuff. What do they nibble on? They nibble on these pillars that you've been uh, seeing me uh, at this whole time. So like these pillars, there's three of them by the way, they are basically super essential to survive the uh, upcoming waves, especially when there's a lot of different monsters attacking you. So you would obviously stand behind the pillars, manipulate going around the pillars in whatever way you can so that you can trap uh, many things in the opposite side or maybe on the adjacent corner so that you can take care of one thing at a time instead of like having all of them attack you but the nibblers you know they're a huge pain because they basically treat these pillars as if they're like their opponents so these pillars have an HP bar so if the nibblers actually get them down to zero then the pillar will actually get destroyed and then there's no obstacle for you to use to you know utilize and yeah you're pretty fucked without the pillars so you have to like make sure you freeze the nibblers as fast as you can before they actually get to the pillar but if they do then you obviously you try your best to kill them as fast as possible so like generally speaking for every wave there are nibblers that spawn so you try your best to kill the nibblers as fast as possible before like anything else so the next commonly seen monster is the Jao Mitch Ra, which is like the flying little bugger thing. And they look like a torture from Pets Control or basically a Inferno version of the level 22 bat from the fight caves. So they also have a draining property. So this thing, if it hits you, it either drains your run energy or it drains your 
combat stats. How much and to what degree, I don't know, but it definitely drains your run and your combat stats. These bats usually aren't a problem because they're pretty easy to freeze and yeah, you can freeze them and I would say about five steps away from them, they can't even attack you. But let's say you've trapped all the really you know powerful monsters but you couldn't get the bat stuck, that's fine, you should just get rid of it quickly, otherwise you know your stats will get drained. Otherwise it's not too big of a problem tackling the bats. And the third monster that you'll be confronting in the Inferno, and actually you'll be seeing a lot, is the Joe Uck. It's the, you know, big blob thing. And these guys are so, so annoying, okay? Because they have two different attack styles, and it has a really weird mechanic where it will detect your protection prayers and then switch styles. So, for example, let's say it notices you and then it sees that you're protecting from mage, then during a certain amount of duration afterwards, it will fire range instead. You have to trick it into thinking that you're gonna protect from one style and then you quickly switch to the other. So, for example, I would have protect from mage on, it notices me with that on, then I would quickly have to switch over to protect from range because it's gonna use a range attack and then I'll be able to dodge it. And I will have to do that for every single time he's about to attack. So you have to basically get the timing right. And these things are really powerful too. They also hit like 20s and yeah, it's very deadly, man. I honestly have almost come close to dying so many times because of these Joe Ux, especially because they can combo well with the other bigger monsters that will be coming up later on in the Inferno that I have yet to talk about. And one more thing about those Joel Ox is that once it dies, of course, it splits up into, you know, more things. And this time it splits into three versus, you know, its counterpart from the Fight Caves. And those three, they're pretty challenging as well. They have three different styles. So if it's red, it's melee, you know, blue, mage. And they can all hit like up to 18s. But obviously, they're not the worst part. It's just the primary form that's really annoying to handle. The next monster you will be encountering really shortly into the Inferno, I would say like in the first few waves, is the melee serpent looking thing. I just cannot pronounce these names, they're so hard. So I'll just call it the serpent thing. It's a melee specific monster and it's got a really gimmicky mechanic which will really screw you over later on when you have like all these other monsters you know attacking you at the same time and you have to trap things so this serpent can freaking teleport it's ridiculous so for example if you trapped it on the opposite side of the obstacle for um, i don't really know the timing but i would say like either half a minute or a minute it will teleport to where you are standing currently so this is really fucked up because let's say you are you know uh, attacking the ranger, you got all these other things blocked on the other side, and then all of a sudden it spawns on you. Well, this thing will fuck you up, okay? This guy melees for like a good 45. I've seen him hit me constantly for 40s, especially when I fuck up. So, yeah, it's very deadly, very easy to die. It's probably one of the biggest reasons how you would die before you reach like the final waves because, oh yeah, man, this thing's super deadly. So you have to be very smart, outmaneuver it somehow, by basically moving on to the other side. Hopefully you'll still be able to keep the other things trapped and not have them damage you. And once you reach around wave, if I recall like 18 or so, you'll start encountering your next monster, which is the big rangers. They're like, you know, the toxels, except more menacing looking. Oh my goodness, these guys are so fucking powerful. I mean, they don't have anything special in terms of mechanics, but they hit really hard. They hit like, I would say the highest I've ever been hit by them is like a 48 and they're super accurate. So if you don't have your range protection prayer on, which can happen a lot because you have to flick between multiple different prayers. Yeah, if you fuck up, it'll probably hit you for like, I would say an average of like 30 or 20. So it's really easy to die because of the rangers it really combos well with the final monster i'm gonna be talking about in a second 
So the last monster I managed to get to on my first day of the Inferno was the Jalzik, which is basically the Ketzik of Inferno. The giant ass, you know, doggy lizard thing. Oh yes, man. This guy is the cream of the crop in terms of a really challenging fight. Even before, you know, the final boss, even before the Jads. And these majors are the reason why I pretty much fail my infernal attempt because these guys not only do they hit incredibly hard with their magic I've been hit a 70 and I'm pretty sure I can hit even higher I, I could imagine hitting like an 80 or something and not only do they hit incredibly hard they also have this broken as ability to revive any monster that you've killed in the same wave I think except for the rangers so it can revive the serpent creatures it can revive the bats it can revive the blobs oh yeah man it's so fucked up especially when it revives the melee guy because as you know the melee guy he can teleport around so yeah it'll really fuck up your basically lures and yeah, so many times that i've had to kind of change my lures a bit mid fight because he just decides to hey i'm gonna go and spawn the melee guy back again and it's unpredictable sometimes he spawns things back fast sometimes it takes a while for him to spawn, but you just have to be on the lookout for you know when it spawns. So ideally, you want to be able to kill the major before you kill anything else, so that the major will not be able to revive anything because you haven't killed anything in that wave. But because the inferno is so randomized, there will be a lot of times where the spawns will be so shit that you don't have a choice but to kill the other monsters before you can actually tackle the 360 so then that wave will become inevitably a lot longer luckily the things that revives is only half hp but still it really is super challenging especially when the zegs and the big rangers start coming in at the same time oh boy it's a fucking hellhole dude so this is what i have learned so far about the inferno on the first day a lot of it just from trying it out of course and a lot of it just from checking out what other people were doing and yes there's still so much to learn about the inferno especially when it comes to like optimal strategies for things like luring honestly i feel like it's such a big part of the inferno knowing how to lure these monsters appropriately in respect to the three pillars that you see right now is super important so i think one of my biggest problems when i was doing inferno today was that i just didn't really know how to lure the monsters I guess efficiently because I feel like flicking was fine I would have had so much more food and prayer even by wave 56 that I died at but the problem is is that I just could not get the luring down for a uh, more of the complicated waves where like there's 360s and the 180s where there are the majors and the rangers and the blobs all coming at you at once with the melee serpent yeah those waves are really fucked up so unless I get the luring down to a science at the inferno, there's no way I'll be able to make it to the boss, you know, with enough uh, supplies to actually do it. So today I only really learned how to lure with two pillars and not the third one. So I've been using the northern pillar and the southern pillar, but not the pillar as you can see that is on the side of the wall. And I just figured out that you can actually take advantage of that pillar that's stuck on the wall. It really helps a lot, actually. You can uh, basically trap more things if you learn how to utilize every single pillar. So I am kind of getting an idea of how to do it. So I'm pretty sure maybe tomorrow I'll be able to, you know, do the Inferno even better with luring. And the irony is, even if I learn how to do optimal luring at the Inferno, there's still the problem of equipment so what you see me using now is actually not optimal i thought i would have everything i need to really be able to you know do the inferno well and this is a little sad because it seems that you really need a twisted bow in order to do the inferno well at least i guess for this month because unless there's some godsend meta that people discover somewhere down the line you and Inferno just becomes easy because of it you're gonna need this twist the bow it seems like twist the bow is pretty mandatory so that's it for this video guys i will be continuing a few more inferno attempts 
on the next upcoming Iron Man episode just because I feel like if I could at least get to the jab waves which is like uh, wave like 66 or 7 or so then I feel like that would be an amazing achievement knowing that I probably can't complete the kill at the moment without like a twisted bow but I'm fine with that it's it's okay you know twisted bow is a dream of mine to get anyway so one day I would love to be able to actually complete the inferno so there will be a time and opportunity for that as long as I keep going for the twisted bow of course I give huge props to Jagex though for this update because I don't recall any like update that was like bossing and stuff that people were not able to beat on the first day so I think Inferno might be one of the only things that people have not been able to defeat in the first day and maybe not even for the first few days or even a week so that's just insane so the Inferno just really pushed the limits of I guess difficulty in this game and it seems like there could be more challenging things to come if Jagex really sets their eye on it with our you know combat system so that's really amazing so if you guys enjoyed this type of video feel free to give me some feedback by just you know giving the video a like or something that way I'll know if I want to do some more of these videos if some really interesting PVM updates come out or you know something along those lines but yeah otherwise I will see you guys later with an Iron Man episode probably in a few days I hope alright see you guys later